I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Now, here are your hosts, Pastors Lynette and Craig Hagan. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you've tuned in today. And I am so excited about having our son with us on this broadcast. And you know, the, uh, the sermon today, will, you will be doing the sermon today. Tell us yeah, about it. The sermon today is called The Touch of Faith. And actually... Um, this is a story about the one with the issue of blood from Mark chapter 5. And, and really, you know, my grandfather called him Papa, yes. Brother Hagen, for most of you. I mean, this was probably the, the story that he probably preached the most, you know, yes. as a little kid, you know, hearing that. But, you know, I, I, I just one of my favorite, when I'm preaching faith on healing, um, Mark chapter 5 is one of my favorite stories to use. So let's just go um, right now to the touch of faith where I read from Mark chapter 5, the one with the issue of blood. Every time I minister on healing, I, I always like to go to the Bible and like to go through um, one of Jesus' stories of Jesus wherever he laid hands upon the sick. And, um, you know, up until a few hours ago, I was going to read a different, different, um, different account. But um, I don't know, this afternoon I was just praying and seeking God and, and actually read a couple of things um, that my grandfather wrote. And... Um, I wanted to go back to his favorite scripture, his favorite um, story that he likes. He always liked to read Mark chapter five. I've heard him preach it many, 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 many times. Uh, Mark chapter five, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to read the whole account. Then we're going to look, through, look in detail. Mark chapter five, I'm going to start with verse number 24. He always started with verse 25, but I want to start with verse 24. And I have a reason for that because Mark chapter five, verse 24 tells us um, it says, so Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. You know, a lot of times we, when we start with verse 25, we don't realize that there was a great multitude that was already there. And, you know, because it talks about the great multitude, but sometimes we want to know where they came from. Well, there was a great multitude um, there. And Jesus actually was on his way to Jairus' house. Some people th think he was sitting there speaking. You know, he wasn't having a service. He actually was moving. All right, so it's really important to understand as we look at this. It says, now verse 25, now a certain woman, um, this is, I'm reading from the New King James here. Um, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no be better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of, of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see um, her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, it is kind of interesting to, to, to look at this. Um, first of all, um, you know, here's this woman that had suffered a disease for 12 years. Now, 12 years is a long time. Anyone ever kind of figured out how long 12 years is? The way I figured out how long 12 years is, is I figure first grade through 12th grade. Think about how long you went to school, and that's how long this lady suffered um, from, from a disease. Now, maybe you said, well, I went to college. Well, okay, you know, almost as long as you went to school. But I mean, now the other thing about it is, if you suffered something for 12 years and then got healed, because you know what? I graduated from college now 30 years ago, from you know, 31 years ago, so from high school, you know, 34 years ago, and I can barely remember high school. You know, so I'm not saying you should have to suffer for something for 12 years, but you realize the span of time seemed like a long time. But you know what? Once you're healed, it doesn't really matter. 
So, but this woman suffered a, a disease for 12 years and it wasn't like she didn't try. It says that she basically spent all she had and the doctors couldn't do anything about it. And she didn't even get any better. Actually, she got worse. And um, so I was reading today um, from the Passion, Passion Translation. You know, after I got a hold of Ephesians 3.20, from the, I decided to start reading more things in the Passion. So I want to kind of go through the Passion Translation of, of the same story and kind of look, you know, more in depth. Anyway, it says, immediately Jesus went with him, verse 24, with him and the huge, and the huge crowd followed, pressing in on him from all sides. So here was Jesus and he was walking and they were on their way to Jairus' house to, 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 um, for his, his daughter had, was sick. And so it says the huge crowd, I mean, that's Donald Trump's word, huge. You know, the huge crowd was pressing in. It says it was pressing in on him from all sides. You know, I don't know if you've ever been in a huge crowd. The only thing I can really think about here um, recently is, um, is after the fireworks show at Disney World, everyone's watching the fireworks show, and then it's always like the last thing, and then every, the huge crowd is trying to get out of the park. Now, last time we were there, we actually had reservations and the place was going to close pretty soon. So we had to push through the huge crowd to get to the bus. And we didn't have to want to wait so long for the bus to be able to, you know, get to our reservations. And it was just hard to walk because everybody was like, you know, all doing the same thing, all pushing to go the same direction. Now, the difference is, is that this huge crowd was all pushing to get to Jesus. But you know what? They were pushing to get to Jesus for no particular reason. No particular reason. They just wanted to touch him or they just wanted to say, um, I, I touched Jesus or maybe they wanted to get a selfie. I don't know. You know, they were just over there trying to get close to Jesus, you know, because um, so they could say, hey, I, I, I touched Jesus, you know, so they get home and put it on their Instagram, um, things like that. Obviously, they didn't have Instagram. I um, just want to let you know, for some of you people who are listening and thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, they didn't even have a telephone. All right, so, I mean, you know, I know you can't relate. But anyway, so it says that the huge crowd followed pressing in on him from all sides. Now, in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had under treatment, she was getting worse instead of getting better. Now, let's think about this. Has anyone ever read the Old Testament? Thank you for the 13 people who read the Old Testament. I mean, like, you know, there is an Old Testament. I know many of them are like, man, that's just old stuff. Now, if you read through the Old Testament, they actually talk about people with blood diseases. And if you have a blood disease, you are supposed to quarantine yourself. And we know a lot about quarantine in the you know, day and age we live into. And according to the law, if anyone got close to you because you had a blood disease that could get on them, you were supposed to cry, unclean, unclean. Anybody else read that in the Old Testament? You're supposed to cry unclean, unclean. Do you realize that sometimes we don't realize this because, because this scripture is in the New Testament, but do you realize that the New Testament was still the Old Testament until Jesus died and rose again? So, so it, this was still under the, under the old covenant, the old law, which meant then for this lady to be even in the crowd, she was breaking the law. Now, I want to point that out because so for her breaking the law, um, you know, that's even more commitment than you even think about. Because in order for her to go out to try to see Jesus, she's doing, she's coming against the law. I mean, she could get a ticket. I mean, she could wind up in, in prison. I mean, I know I'm joking, but you know, I'm not. You know, she's supposed to cry unclean, unclean. You know, and you can, you know, I know some people can see, you know, possible deniability. Well, I didn't know I had a blood disease. But it says she's, she obviously knew she spent everything she had to go to doctors and she didn't get any better, but she rather got it worse. 
But here's the thing. It says right here, um, when she heard about Jesus, now this is the passage translation, verse 27. When she heard about Jesus' healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl is what it says here. Um, you know, the thing about it was when she heard that Jesus was coming to her town, it didn't matter whether it was against the law or not, she was going to do something about her sickness. She already, she already had done some, you know, she spent everything that she had, but that wasn't doing anything. But praise God that she heard about Jesus. Now, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how Brother Hagin always said. Because he said the Greek word there for hearing promotes continuous action. As we hear the word of God, it, 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 it will build our faith. But I, I want to point this out whenever she had heard about Jesus, because evidently she had heard about Jesus healing other people. Because if she wouldn't heard about Jesus healing other people, she would have never broke the law to come, come get to Jesus. Or she would have never, you know, said, if I can just touch his clothes. You know, but... She had heard about Jesus, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But something else I want to point out, that's why it's real important for people to give testimonies. All right, so if you have a testimony, testimony at raymond.org. If you have a testimony about our ministry, how you've been healed on our ministry, it's really good to hear testimonies. Why? Because when you hear testimonies of someone who had a similar ailment that you had, and you were healed of that ailment, then that helps build my faith. Well, you know what? If God can do it for you, he sure could do it for me because I'm a better Christian than you are. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, you know, God's no respecter of persons. And so a lot of times it's interesting is, you know, it's, it's, it's really good to, to share testimonies. So people, to, to build people's faith. You know, because if this woman wouldn't have heard someone else's testimony, she wouldn't have even thought about having faith. Now, you realize, I, I kind of joke about this. If, if you realize in the Bible, going through the Bible, this is Mark chapter 5, right? Well, Mark chapter 11 is not written yet. She, she doesn't know Mark chapter 11. And even if she was alive in Mark chapter 11, she still wouldn't, wouldn't really know. Because, you know, the, the thing about it is, if this woman began to speak, because right here it says, when she heard about Jesus, Jesus' healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, if I could, could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. Now, I like the, the passage right here because it says, and she kept saying to herself. You know, the other translation says, for she said. Well, you know what? She had to say it, but I believe that that woman, as first of all, she was breaking the law. Secondly, you don't, I mean, this woman's dying. If you're dying, you don't feel about, you don't feel like person to the crowd. And I kind of go, you know, so if, if you're dying in life, you probably don't want to go watch fireworks at Disney World and push to the crowd. But, you know, so this woman probably did not in the natural want to go, but you know what? Jesus Christ was, was right there, and she wasn't going to miss the opportunity. Now, I do want to point out, Jesus Christ was not there ministering. He was walking through her town. Because a lot of people think he's standing there. He was not standing. He was a moving target. Not only was he moving, people were trying to throng him. But she kept saying, if I just touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. It's also interesting, the fact of the matter is, do you realize that most of the time that we read in the Bible, that Jesus went to them and touched them? In fact, this is the only one, that, the place that I know where, where someone else touched him. I, I don't even know where she got that she could touch him and be healed. But somehow, some way, she, she, she's like, you know what? He doesn't have to touch me. I'm going to go touch him. And I'm going to do whatever is necessary to touch him, no matter how hard it is. And, you know, and it, you know I love this. It says, and she kept saying, and she kept saying, and she kept saying, and she kept saying. She kept saying, if I just touch his clothes. Now, you see, you know, this is a big if because you know what? She had to do the if. 
You know, first of all, it was an if, but, but then she's going to be a doer of God's word. She's going to go and, and do what she says. Because if she didn't touch her, his clothes, you know what? She wouldn't be healed. Now, it wasn't easy to get to Jesus. It's not easy to push through multitudes. Plus, you know, we don't necessarily understand um, the culture that much. Well, it's, it's kind of still the culture. Do you realize it wouldn't be very um, good for a woman, especially in that day and age, to push a man out of the way to get to Jesus. I mean, you know, in fact, in the Bible, when it, when it says that Jesus fed the 5,000, that was 5,000 men. It doesn't really have a lot of accounts of women, you know, because for whatever reason, they thought of women as, as a lesser vessel or whatever, you know. And so it was not kosher for a woman to press a guy out. But, but I'm sure that he, she was pushing through the crowd, was probably pushing men, women, children, didn't matter who was in front of her. Because she said, if I could just get to Jesus, if I can just get to Jesus. See, see, I mean, she was focused on one thing and one thing only, getting to Jesus. Because Jesus was the source of her healing. I mean, she already spent all her money. She already did everything that she could do in the natural. And there was only one thing that she could do, and that was to get to Jesus. And there was nothing that was going to stop her from getting to Jesus. It was that tenacity that, that, that she had. I'm going to get to Jesus no matter what. You know what? It didn't matter. She was going to get to Jesus. Now, she probably didn't feel like pushing through the crowd. She probably didn't feel like doing that. But you know what? She was going to do it. In verse 29, it says, as soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. Now, why did it stop? Because the power, of, the healing power of God went into her. Now, as soon as, as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. And so, um, you know, I think about this a lot of times. There might have been other people in the Bible times, that was trying to write a Bible story, but it never got written because they never completed it. You know, because what if this woman would have got to a point where she thought it was just too hard, there was no way she was going to do this, and what if she just decided, maybe she's five feet from Jesus and just said, forget it, I'm just going home. What would have happened? She would have died. Nobody would have heard the story. But you know what? Not only did, was this a story, it's not, and if sometimes we say it's a story, it's not a story, it's a testimony. And the thing about it is the amount of people that have heard this testimony and changed their life, their life by the way that they believe has been infinite. Thank God that she went the extra five feet. Now, I don't know, but I like to imagine this because if you look at other translations, it says she touched the hem of his garment, which to him would kind of mean the bottom part. Um, I kind of think, you know, she was at her last, you know, hope, and so she was probably crawling on the ground to try to get through these people. And she was reaching out, you know, and, and she touched him. And as soon as she touched him, he touched her with his healing power. Because, you know, because remember, she kept saying, if I just touch his clothes, I shall be healed. Now, Mark 11 says that, that we can have what we say. And, you know, she, you know, she said it with her mouth. She believed it because she went out and did it. And she had what she said. Now, um, it is interesting. Remember, all these people were, were, were trying to touch Jesus there were people touching Jesus left and right. But verse 30 says, Jesus knew at once, this is the tra Passion Translation, Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him, for he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for, some, for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd, saying, who touched my clothes? Interesting. I like it when it says he, he felt the power that always surged around him. 
There was a power that was around Jesus. That's probably why the people want to touch him because they want to feel the power, but the power didn't do anything for them because it wasn't a touch of faith. As we notice this woman with issue of blood, you know, she kept saying, if I just touch but his clothes, you know, she just didn't say it. She went out and did it. Yes. You know, because she said, if I touch his clothes. Now, the interesting part about it is I don't know anywhere else, you know, in the New Testament where somebody made that statement. It's always about Jesus touching them. Yes. But in this situation, she said, if I just touch his clothes, I shall be healed. She did some action. Yeah. So she made action. So yeah. when she touched him, he touched her with his healing power, yes. you know, and um, according to Webster's New World Dictionary, faith is an unquestioning belief. Yes. You know, and many people, you know, they start questioning, like, God, when are you going to do that? Well, when's the question? God, how come, you know, yeah. but we, if, you know, according to the dictionary, faith is an unquestioning belief. We shouldn't question. Yeah. You know, we, we either believe or we don't believe. But, you know, this woman, she made up her mind. She was going to do whatever it took to get to Jesus. Yes. And if you go back and read the law, um, our, we've read the Bible together many, many times. Yes, we have. And going through the <laughs> Old Testament, I remember talking about it says if you have a blood disease, you're supposed to quarantine yourself yes. from everybody else. If anyone comes near you, you're supposed to cry unclean, unclean. Yes. So really for her to be in, you know, in a press with all these people, yes. that, that was breaking the law. Yes. But she was going to do whatever it, it took to touch Jesus. You know, and Jesus is still touching us with his healing power. And so maybe you're out there watching yes. right now and you need healing in your body. If you'll just reach your hand out to the TV screen, I'm going to reach my hand out toward you and pray. Heavenly Father, we just yes. thank you right now that you are touching every single one that's going through any kind of situation. Father, we thank you for the healing power of God yes. flowing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And we thank you that is driving out that that Satan has tried to do, yes. Father. And we just thank you for, for testimonies that we shall hear and that we shall see yes. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there's no distance in the anointing of the power of God. And so, if you got healed right then, I, if you have a testimony, I want you to email us at testimony at rhema.org. You know, son, I know that, um, of course, you were on crusades with your papa ever since you were three years of age. No. And I, you know, I would watch you uh, watch him as he was praying for the sick. And that was just a passion for you uh, then. And it's still a, a passion for you now. And you know what? You've had many uh, testimonies yeah. of results of your praying. For and, and we've had a lot of testimonies where people got healed for watching, you know, our you know, service yes. at Rama or rhema.org. Um, yes. You know, and all kinds of testimonies, just, you know, just great to hear what God's doing, you know, and God's still in the healing business. He Amen. is. Well, this is the last week for our special offer. Uh, this is Love, Face, uh, Firm Foundation, uh, three CDs by um, my husband, Kenneth Hagan. Uh, my book, Talk to Me. Uh, this is a book on uh, talking to God. You know, sometimes <clears throat> people think that it's kind of hard to talk to God. It isn't. I, I just use normal language and, you know, I just say, hey, God, I got a problem and I need help. And so that book is very good information for you. And then our daughter, a CD on Holy Spirit, the ultimate best friend, she just has a unique way. Uh, of just explaining uh, things in just a very unique way. And your CD, Craig, yeah, what is Entitled it? Just Believe, you know, that no matter what, we need to believe. Um, you know, we don't let our circumstances or anything else keep us from, from what we believe. That's right. And that's for a gift of $35 or more. Um, great savings there. So we encourage you. This is the last week that you can get that offer. Now, we are going to have Living Faith conferences uh, in March. Uh, we will be in um, Madison, Alabama, uh, Cornerstone Word of Life Church with Pastors Mark and Rhonda Garver. And you can go on rhema.org slash LFC and find out all the information. And then we're going to go over to Ridgely, Tennessee at, uh, for a Living Faith Conference at Abundant Life Fellowship Church, Pastors David and Tammy Gray. Uh, you can also get all the information on that conference. conference yeah, yeah. Yes, on that conference at rhema.org. Tell us, Craig, where we're going to be in Florida. <laughs> all right. In um, April. April 2nd through the 4th, um, you guys are going to be in Apopka, Florida. That, that's the north part of Orlando, actually. Yes. Um, Pastor um, 
Pastor Daryl and Lisa Morgan um, going to be there. Then from there, you're going to go to Valdosta, Georgia, April yes. 5th to the 7th. Anchor Faith Church, um, Pastor Mark and Ashley Brady. And like I said, you can go to rhema.org um, and find any information. Or you can actually go to our, um, we have an app, the yes, Rama USA do. app. And mm -hmm. you can go there and you can find out all, all the different you know things we have going on. Now, something I do want to talk about um, is um, my Rama podcast that yes. myself and Tony McKinnon do. Now, you know, you have to understand, Tony and I, we're not the most <laughs> serious people in the world. So, so, no. um, so you know, we, we do talk about the word, but we also have fun. You know, it's a, it's a fun time. Well, Craig, you know, it says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine yeah. in the Bible. So y'all are biblical. And, and, we, uh, <laughs> and one thing that we do is is we um, interview Rhema graduates. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting how many Rhema graduates are doing awesome things throughout the, the thing. And so you can find our podcast anywhere that you can go to rhema.org or anywhere you listen the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, wherever you find podcasts, you can do it there. You know, but something else too is um, we're, you know, Rama Bible Training College is a great place. And like I said, yes, you know, um, we're always, you know, talking to you guys about Rama Bible Training College. And if you just go to rbtc.org, you can find more information about Rama Bible Training College. And, you know, it's an awesome place um, to is. be trained for the ministry or just to learn more about the Bible. That's right. Well, it's about time to get out of here. We want to thank all of you that are Rhema Word Partners. What is a partner? A partner is someone that prays for us regularly, sends an offering at least once per month to help support Rhema. And we want to thank all of you who do that. And we want to say thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to the, to the world. world. When you know God and get to know God, you don't have any trouble with your love walk. If you live in line with God's Word, we will begin to see that we become a love child of a love God. Love, Faith's Firm Foundation. Three anointed CDs by Kenneth W. Hagen. Talk to Me, Connecting with the Heart of God, a powerful book by Lynette Hagen. Plus the CDs, Just Believe by Craig W. Hagen, and The Holy Spirit, The Ultimate Best Friend by Denise Hagen Burns. The book and all five CDs can be yours today for a gift of only $35 or more. Just call toll free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.